Hey guys! Today I'm going to talk about bridges. I'm going to put some wedges in the kidneys here, whole heap of weight on top of the bridge and just see how it affects the sound. Have you ever wondered when you're playing how come the sound is so big? I mean, if you just have a string on its own, you can hardly hear anything. So one of the big contributing factors is actually the bridge. The main part is actually the body of the instrument, but the really important part is the bridge, which transfers the sound from the strings through the bridge onto the top plate. So the bridge plays that really important part. Um, you know, if the sound post is called the soul and sung languages, the bridge is, you know, it's also a very important part. Maybe it's the mind, I don't know. The way it works is there's a lot of tension on the top plate. Well, actually, there is 27 kilos of weight on the top plate of a violin at any time. You bring that to a double bass and it's about 95 kilos. So that's like a very large adult standing on a double bass all the time. This is probably the equivalent of a, maybe an eight or nine year old boy standing on the violin all the time. So imagine that you're playing and there's an eight year old person standing on your violin. Luckily you don't have to hold them up. Otherwise you get really strong arms. Anyway, because of that immense pressure on the top plate, it actually kind of amplifies the vibration of the string. Uh, have a look at this. I, I, I took a video of what it looks like when the string vibrates um, uh, towards the bridge. First the string vibrates and it starts like just these little vibrations that move onto the bridge and then the bridge starts moving and it transfers the sound down diagonally through you can you can see how um, you can almost see here that uh, that it's um, there's kind of a, a diagonal thing happening here like this there's, there's like diagonal through here and the other way around there um, it's kind of, it's quite weak in the middle here. It's quite thin. And so that allows the bridge to really get a movement happening. And that movement then goes opposite and gets passed on through the bridge feet onto the top plate. And it creates this whole pumping action. So the bridge is really important and so when I work on a bridge so I hand carve each bridge for an instrument and so when I work on a bridge I really customize each bridge for that instrument and then customize that again to the person so some of the things that you have to watch out from on a bridge is firstly that the curvature of the bridge this curvature here is 100% correct. So this is a classical um, or Baroque curvature that I use on, on these instruments. You can, um, you can also, if you're playing folk music, you may want a slightly flatter curvature and that'll allow you to play double stops a bit easier, which is just great, you know, when you're playing little Irish jigs or bluegrass or something like that. <laughs> violin I'm, I'm quite careful so there's um, there's string heights on the E string and on the G and <clears throat> on the G the string height is 5.5 millimeters on the violin and three and a half millimeters uh, yeah so on the G of the violin and three and a half 
millimeters on the E string of the violin. Now once you move on to cello that's quite different and for steel strings it, again it's different for steel strings and nylon strings. So for cello it's about four and a half millimeters and seven and a half um, maybe a little bit less for steel strings and then if you're playing gut strings on a cello that'll go higher again. Uh, also on the um, and then double bass is different again. So each instrument has the right string heights. I'm not going to go into the exact heights right now. It's just good to know that they have to be right to make playing easy. Um, the next thing that's important on the bridge is the way it's actually carved out. So this is where I have the greatest effect on the tone of the of the bridge, like how it'll. Um, transfer the sound across and how it'll affect the tone of the instrument. So I'm super fussy about it and I try and compensate. A lot of instruments have, uh, you know, some slight deficiencies. So some might be a little bit louder on the bass side or a bit weaker on the bass side. They might have a boxy deep sound or they might have a shrill clearer sound. So I try and compensate and just even out the sound a little bit with the bridge. So one of the things that will have an effect on the tone is the actual thickness of the bridge. I notice that a lot of makers do uh, have the top of the bridge very thin and quite often that um, that may actually have an adverse effect on the tone. Um, then also the base of the bridge, the thickness of the base of the bridge is really important. Um, and then uh, but then also the way the whole bridge is carved out. So if you carve out a lot of the of the kidneys and the heart, uh, as well as the legs, the bridge will absorb some of the um, some of the pressure coming down onto it, and and it'll lose some of the sound. So for an overly intense sounding instrument, that might actually be quite a nice thing. But if an, in, an instrument isn't actually sounding that clear, I'll try and leave a little bit more timber on there so that it can transfer as much of the sound on the, onto the top plate as possible. Also the feet, how big the feet are is really important. That also has an effect. And underneath, um, as I showed last time, um, underneath the instrument you have the sound post and the bass bar just in case you didn't see my last video here they are again so this is an instrument I cut open a long time ago now don't try this at home this is a really cheap instrument and cutting it up is actually I've done the world a favor so you here you can see how the sound post sits underneath the bridge feet but on the other side there is the bass bar, and the bass bar has a role of first, firstly supporting the top plate on this side, because there's 27 kilos bearing down, as I was saying earlier, uh, but also it has the effect of transferring the sound throughout the top plate, like further throughout the top plate. So, um, so where this bridge sits in relation to the bass bar and the sound post is really important as well. Um, so you want the bridge feet to overlap very slightly, like overhang very slightly where the bass bar is and also overhang very slightly where the sound post is. And that's really important for a good tone. I'm going to put this away again. And I'm back. And um, so the other thing that's really important for a bridge is that it actually fits 100% to the top plate. So you can see in here, like a, a, along here, so I, I basically fit the bridge directly to the top plate and that has to fit 100% because the more contact there is, again, the more of the vibrations will get onto the top plate. The bridge is hugely important. It's there to transfer the sound waves from the strings down onto the top plate. Uh, by the way the bridge is made, it'll have a difference in the sound. And I have done a lot of research into the acoustics. Um, also with my father, Helga Grevert, who's a German master violin maker. Uh, we've done a lot of research to really figure out how to make bridges to really improve the sound and bring out the best in instruments. So often I'll see instruments with bridges on them that are fitted in a way that are actually not the best for the 
for the instrument and quite often you know I'll have a player come in just before an audition or a concert and it makes such a huge difference to have a well fitted and an, a bridge that works really well just make sure that when you get a bridge fitted make sure that your violin maker has an understanding of the acoustics that's really important because there are bridges and there are bridges another thing is that uh, um, <clears throat> some of the bridges I use have actually been seasoned for over 30 years so that's important as well you want a nice like a you want a nice piece of wood on your bridge you know hopefully quite hard and uh, if you were to drop it it actually gives quite a clear ring like this so you can hear it has a little bit of a ring to it like this So you can hear it has a little bit of a ring to it. So that's important as well. So you want to make sure that the bridges that you use have a really fine grain. Now, here's a bridge that my father um, made, oh, probably 20 something years ago, but you can see it has a really nice fine grain to it. Um, this is one of my uh, older bridges. The grain isn't quite as fine, but it's also not an, uh, for an instrument that is quite as good. But some of the bridges that I have have incredibly fine, beautifully fine grain, and they're seasoned for like 30 and more years. So here are a couple of my bridge blanks. Now the interesting thing about this old, this bridge here is that I bought it of a violin maker um, in 1990 and they had then seasoned it for five years already so this bridge has been seasoned for at least 35 years uh, this bridge hasn't been seasoned quite as long but it's got it's a really good example of a bridge with fine grain I'm also going to do a little bit of an experiment um, just to see what happens when you change a bridge so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some wedges in the kidneys here. And the other thing I'm going to do is put a whole heap of weight on top of the bridge and just see how it affects the sound. This is the violin sounding normally. This is a Kalong Mazong. It's a beautiful violin. So what I'll do is I'll just a very simple G major scale. Okay, so now I'm going to make some little wedges that, um, here we go. So I'm going to stick them either side on the bridge here. So one on this side and one on the other side. All right, let's play this scale again. Sounds totally different. And especially, you don't notice it so much on the upper, uh, on the E string, but on the G, you really notice. a really big difference. Okay, now I'm going to put some weights on. Okay, so what I'm going to use is I'm actually going to use some magnets uh, either side of the bridge. So put a magnet on this side. Oh, it's going to be interesting. And a magnet on this side. Okay, there you go. Now I have some heavy magnets on here. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, let 
let's do the last thing. Let's do both. We'll put wedges in and the magnets. There we go. <laughs> without the wedges. Now, without the magnets. You can really see the difference. And the biggest difference is on the lower string because most of the body is being used for the G and the D, like for the lower strings. By the time you get to an E string, you can pretty much put it on a cigar box and it'll still sound okay. Like it won't sound fantastic, but uh, for the lower strings, you know, the, the shape of the body and the bridge are really important. So there you have it. Um, Next time when you play your violin, look down at your bridge and marvel at its complexity and what it actually does to make your instrument sound amazing. And one final hint, make sure you keep your bridge straight. I've got a whole other video on how to do that, so don't. I'm not going to talk about it now. But that's really important. Anyway, if you like the videos that I'm doing, hit subscribe. Um, and uh, also hit the little bell. There's, there's like a bell next to subscribe. That way you'll find out every time I put up another informative video. See ya! I should probably practice more. Thank you.